Nation. Let's go. Welcome in to DMVR Buffs Primetime. We're presented by Illegal Pete's. Everyone's go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. Coach Prime has made the people mad again. Uh-oh. Do I care? Uh, I don't. Neither do I. It's uh, it's a shame all these people just get all up in arms and get their feelings hurt anytime he has anything to say, really. Yeah, I mean, they don't like that he likes to uh, call the shots. Yeah. It's just what it is. It's almost like he's a Hall of Fame player or something, and he has kind of earned the right. Well, let's set the scene first. Okay. Um. Yeah, he went on million dollars worth of game. Do we have the clip? We do have the clip. Oh, yeah, um. Whenever you're ready, Alyssa. Coach Prime talking about Shador and Travis's draft stock, and what is going to happen next April. You're good. <laughs> There's a lot of mouse action going on over there. <laughs> it, the Studio B has had to be reassembled after bracket insanity. Yeah, just about I don't know, forty hours of thirty. I think it was thirty six hours of streaming over four days. And how many of that thirty six were you on for? Actually, it must have been more than that. Over forty. Uh, I would say I was on for about thirty. Yeah, it was a hell of a week. It was. It was. I need to rest. Um. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's just ready. Coach Prime on million dollars worth of game. Where do you predict Shador and Travis going in the draft? Top four. Mm. That's pretty beautiful. Anywhere from one through four. One of them is going to be one. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. One of them is going to be speaking into existence. And the, the, the latter one would not go behind four. Mm. Now. All this is subjective because I know where I want, kind of want them to go. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget shallow, okay? Mm -hmm. But I know where I want them to go. So there's certain cities that ain't, ain't gonna happen. It's gonna okay, be a you want point? It's gonna be a, it's not a, I'm sorry, it's gonna be an Eli. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't doing No, that. but I will say this though. Where do you? There it is. There you go. Look. I don't really understand how uh, you could be mad about this. <laughs> and here is why. I am of the firm and unequivocal belief that a player's success or failure in the National Football League is, I'm not going to say entirely, but I'll say almost entirely dependent on the situation that they end up in. 100%. And why, as a father, with a deep understanding of the game and the league and the things that I just mentioned, would you allow your child to end up in a situation that you don't believe gives them the best chance to succeed? Um I know that some people are going to say that that's just not how it works and you know th that's why they have the NFL draft and that's what creates the parity in the NFL and this is a slippery slope and blah 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 and it's like no it's not um Eli Manning did it and he wasn't the first John Elway did it mm -hmm. and both of those guys had fathers who played and understood what they were getting, what what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's Carolina or I don't know wherever else, but I think that anyone should understand why Coach Prime would not want Shador ending up in a place that he doesn't believe would give him the best chance to succeed. I think that anyone would want to do that for the the people that they love. Definitely. Uh, look at what happened to David Carr when he was drafted by the Texans. Um, just decimated by the end of his rookie year. Almost mm -hmm. without a... Doesn't even have a shot, basically, at that point. Yep. Uh, look at Bryce Young. The situation he's been thrown into. You could say yep. a lot of things about Bryce Young. I do not think the Panthers have done a lot to really enhance his strengths and build around him thus far. Not at all. So, it's... 
Shador has earned this too, by the way. Like he is a certain level above almost every player mm -hmm. in college football, every quarterback. Like he's probably beyond Caleb Williams in terms of status, a uh, combination of status, talent, and pedigree. And even Caleb Williams this last year, he goes to the NFL Combine, doesn't work out, doesn't throw, tells NFL teams, you guys don't get to look at my medicals. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. first off, I'm going one overall. Like, yeah. This is just part of, and what RG3 said, the player empowerment era. And it's coming up through college. We see it with NIL. And it's just a matter of time before these guys make their way to the NFL. And again, this isn't anything new. People do this all the time. People, Absolutely. They do this even after they're drafted. They go, I don't want to play here anymore. Force their way out. Right. I don't get it. I, I mean, well, I do get it. It's the same thing that, that always is with Coach Prime. People just don't like it when mm -hmm. it's him. Um, but I think the, the biggest place where people are off on this is they think that I saw a lot of comments that were like Shador and Travis, uh, aren't good enough to have this sort of opinion. And that's just of funny. It, it's, it's hilarious. And guess what? If for whatever reason that was true, then the organizations that are so dysfunctional, they wouldn't be, um, in the mix for drafting them wouldn't even it wouldn't matter you know mm -hmm. like if these guys were getting drafted in the 20s which will not happen um then you would be getting drafted by like the steelers or the ravens or yeah. you know like obviously the ravens have a quarterback but you know what i mean yeah the teams that pick from 20 to 32 every year mm -hmm. good franchises this is in reference to dysfunctional franchises um that don't give a player the best chance to succeed uh and, and to the idea that these guys aren't good enough just watch just you just sit back yeah because i think coach is right um you know he said one of them is going to go number one and the other one won't go uh any further than four uh, i think personally my interpretation of that is the best quarterback is probably going to go number one mm -hmm. that's going to be shador mm -hmm. and the best player in the draft rarely drops below four because you never know how many teams are going to need quarterbacks this year you probably might you could very well see quarterbacks go one two three mm -hmm. um so because of that you know sometimes really great players fall on the draft because quarterbacks get so overdrafted um but that being said I, I i think that people are going to be shocked the people that are rooting against the success of shador and travis uh, and, and Coach Prime for that matter, but especially Shador and Travis when it comes to reaching the next level, are in for just an awful 12 months. Oh, the bookmark button has been getting used yes, the last yes, few days. Wear it out. And it's the same people, too. Yeah. It's the same exact people every time. And to go to Travis's standpoint here, um, and again, RG3 said this about Marvin Harrison Jr. Didn't do pro day, didn't do combine, didn't even run a 40 because he understands he can control his own narrative and let his play do the talking. Yep. He doesn't have to do this stuff. And especially with Travis, when you're that talented and you have such an insane skill set like he does, you've seen players, and I'm not trying to pick on him, but look at what Vance Joseph did at Arizona. They always brought in these hybrid players on defense, and they always found a way to screw up whatever their skill set was and force a square peg into a round hole in terms of the talent of the player and their skill set. That should be the same thing for Travis. You don't want him to go to an NFL team where, I don't know, they abuse his two-way ability or don't use it enough yep. or you know, stick him at slot receiver for some reason when he's a shutdown corner and yeah. could be a true X receiver. You know what I mean? Like These players are special for a reason. They're not, Coach Prime's not talking out of turn when he talks about, you know, we can kind of force our way here with these guys because he's right. Mm -hmm. They're that talented. Yeah, and you know who knows how often this stuff happens behind the scenes. Uh, it's quite possible that we there have been cases like this that we just haven't heard about mm -hmm. where a player said, hey, look, don't draft me. I'm not going. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go with you. Um, now, when it gets really publicized is when it's a player of the stature of Eli Manning or John Elway, really, really high draft picks. But <clears throat> I think that more than anything, um, you got to you, – you can't always make real life comparisons to football uh, and sports, but I think in this case, you have to look at it that way. Um, if you were the best accountant in the world, 
uh, or the best up and coming accountant in the world, you get to pick what firm you work for. Yeah. Um, if you're the best lawyer, you get to pick. Everywhere else, you get to choose where where your destiny is, and you get to weigh. Okay, how much are they paying me? Obviously, it doesn't matter in this situation. How much, um, you know, what is their their history of how they treat their employees, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. I get why the draft exists, and it's and it's made to create parity. Um, the the worst team gets to pick what they believe is the best player. That makes a lot of sense, but it's not as though Shador is going to come out and or Coach Prime is going to come out and say. Shador is only going to this place. He's saying there's a couple places that we're just not going to go. So instead of going maybe number one, maybe they go. Maybe he goes number two mm-hmm. because he's not going to go uh, to a certain city. To me, this is looking out for the best interest, and it's Coach Prime using his understanding and knowledge of the league, and and he has a very intimate knowledge of the league, the people that work around the league. He's been in the league. He's covered the league. He knows just about everything. Uh, and he has all the people that he can talk to to talk about, oh, this this owner or this coaching staff. Yeah. And so uh, it, it is very much I only have a problem with it from a lot of people. We, you know, I only have a problem with it when it's Coach Prime. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there were people. You know, I don't like the idea that no one said anything when it was Eli Manning. I'm sure there were people that said so. Oh, definitely. Um, but I don't remember it as i was pretty young at that time it was before the twitter age too yeah same thing with john elway i'm sure people did have issues with it but guess what both of those guys uh are super bowl champions Mm -hmm. and probably when all is said and done both of them will be in the hall of fame i don't think they have any regrets over um someone having an issue with them picking their destination or picking their non-destination for sure Um, Just a few more points about Coach Prime, and you kind of mentioned it. We've seen like a glimpse into how connected he is in terms of the NFL and the relationships that he has and how deep that they run just at him assembling these coaching staffs at Colorado. Like what he, the relationships he has amongst the NFL is probably more information than agents than some other GMs and some top players just yes. because he's been around the game for so long. And also, how can we forget this is the guy who like walked out of a Giants meeting at the NFL Combine saying, You're not gonna be you're not picking high enough to even get me. Yeah. Like this isn't any surprise. Yeah, a hundred percent. And someone in the comments said like you guys will change your tune if you find out that the Broncos are on his no list or whatever. I I wouldn't, one, but I, the Broncos will not be on that. And <laughs> With how the Broncos have performed the last few years, I couldn't really blame him. <laughs> but it's not about that. I don't. I think. know. Yeah. It's not about. I don't think that Coach Prime is gonna say, "Oh, this team's bad." Mm-hmm. I think it's more gonna be about, okay, well, the ownership is dysfunctional. They have a history of doing this or that or the other thing. They've never invested in you know the offensive line, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people forget that Coach Prime has sung the praises of Sean Payton a lot, more than once. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, he said, lay off my guy. He's going to get it right. Trust me. Like he likes Sean Payton. Um, but you know, the Broncos ownership is still young and unproven regardless. I don't think it would happen if it did. My, my stance would not change. I could disagree with the idea that the Broncos were not, were on the, the no list, but I wouldn't disagree with the overarching theme, which is you should have a say in where you go. Mm-hmm. If you are the top of the top, if you are the highest rated overall prospect, you have some leverage. Uh, and I don't, I wouldn't hold it against anyone for uh, doing what they believe is the best for their leverage to try and make sure that they have the most, the best possible career. I mean, look at what the Cardinals did to Josh Rosen um, and how quickly they moved on from him. And Man, they seemed like they were ready to do it with Kyler this season if they got the number one pick position for Caleb, too. Yeah. Look at how the Panthers have just handled this entire situation. Like, there's multiple scenarios out there that are, you just look at them and it's obvious, like, oh, if you're a top quarterback, why would you want to go there? Yeah. And, you know, we always talk about this word gets around about things. Um, I know that Bryce Young's people are not happy with the way that sure. um, he has been handled Mm -hmm. in Carolina that type of stuff gets around and if they're ready to move off Bryce Young and they go you know they have the number one pick again next year I wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, one of the teams on the list that 
that coach doesn't want Shador going to. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else on this topic? No. <laughs> Shout out to our friends over at Coors Light. It's a chilly day out here in Denver, Colorado. The snow is back, but the mountains are always blue. In fact, the mountains might stay blue longer in weather like this. Coors Light is the best beer for any time. I crushed a ton of them during Bracket Insanity. You did. It's becoming my go-to beer. I love it's that. It's just reliable. Um, you can pace yourself with it. True. It's just lovely Cold, all around. crisp, refreshing. Exactly. When it's time to chill, Coors Light's the beer I reach for. So when you want to hit reset, grab the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Also, shout out to our friends over at Game Time. Um, single game tickets have not yet dropped from the CU ticket office, but if you don't get on that, you're going to need Game Time. Mm. Um, there's a reason why our code, Buffs, was the most used code uh, of anyone in the country last year. And it's yeah. because the only way to get into Buffs games was to use Game Time. Uh, as you guys know, I love Game Time because it rewards you for procrastinating. If you're someone like me where it's like, I love going to a Nuggets game, but I don't love planning things. So I might just like on a Thursday night, just be like, I want to go to the Nuggets game tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'll just open up Game Time, pop in there and be like, oh, wow, I can get in for, you know, 45 bucks in the first level. Uh, and I love that kind of freedom that you get with game time. Uh, I've even done it for playoff games where I literally rolled up to the stadium, got in line to get into the stadium and bought my tickets 10 minutes before the game because the, the tickets prices start to fall off. It's the best. So go over to game time, use the code buffs, B U F F S to get $20 off your first order. I just think it's funny every time how it's always the same people that always pipe up whenever it's anything Colorado. Oh yeah. I wish they would come down and show their face at one of these press conferences. They never will. No. But, man, I would love it. Juju Lewis Let's went go. on his visit last weekend. He spoke to 247 Sports Insider Steve Wiltfong about it. He said, Colorado is a lot of energy. Coach Prime is super positive and motivating. Talking to Coach Shermer and Shador, they want me to make the best decision for me but made it clear that I have the opportunity to play early. Watching practice, they have some guys that can fly. They have weapons on offense and look good on both sides of the ball in the trenches. Um, he's heading back to USC for an official... Or actually, I don't know if it's official or not. Later this week, though. And he has an official visit set up with Georgia for May 31st. He said his dad is working on getting all of his OVs finalized this week. I do not think he has taken an OV yet to Colorado. So potentially a third time we could have Juju in Boulder. I love it. But good signs all around, I think. Yeah, stamp it. Flip watch. Hell yeah. We are on Juju Lewis, flip watch, and USC fans hate it. They are already on full-on defense mode. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen more posts about this than I pretty much ever see about uh, maybe since Jordan Seaton mm -hmm. uh, with Tennessee fans, you know, <laughs> claiming that there's no shot he's going to Colorado yeah. and blah, 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 blah. Juju Lewis is on flip watch, whether oh, yeah. USC fans like it or not. And I don't understand um, because USC fans are saying, like, this is hilarious. How could anyone think he's going to flip? I'm like, buddy. He's taking visits. Yeah, he's there if watching he, practice. Right. If your guy is locked in. And he hasn't scheduled a visit and he hasn't gone anywhere. And all of a sudden, you know, a team start, like if for some reason uh, in January, someone started piping up last year, like Eric Brantley is going to flip whatever. It's like he hasn't done anything. What are you talking about? No, right. he's not. Right. When you're out there and for lack of a better term, going on dates with other people, you are not committed to your current relationship. Yeah. Uh, you could be committed but you're certainly not locked in. Um, this is one where I think the Buffs have a real chance. Uh, and I think it was Matt uh, Matt H on Twitter who mm -hmm. said, look, Coach Prime made his number one focus last year offensive line. He got three out of the top 16 players uh, on the offensive line in the portal, and he got the number one offensive lineman out of uh, the high school ranks. Mm -hmm. You don't think Coach Prime's number one priority this offseason is going to be quarterback? And so whether it's Juju or whether it's the top transfer quarterback of next season, uh, or both. 
Coach Prime's going to find him his quarterback, and Juju is very much in the mix for being a caller out of Buffalo. He is fully on flip watch, whether USC fans like it or not. And I uh, I tapped into my sources. Yeah. Haven't heard back yet. But, so this is unsourced, completely just gut feeling. Mm-hmm. I think he might be a buff. I think so, too. The way he talks about Pat Shermer constantly, um, the fact that he was just at practice kind of taking it in, it's almost like... He's there trying to see, you know, all right, who's going to be my guys this yep. year? Like, who's going to be around when I, if I come here? Um, and to your point about flip watch, there's there's patterns with it, right? Yes. And we saw that with Talon Chandler. We saw it with Aaron Butler. Um, even guys who have flipped to Colorado. Like, there's always a buzz before the flip. There, it's hardly ever, like, a surprise, you know, like, comes out of nowhere. It does happen. Travis Hunter, of course. But when a guy is gearing up to flip after having previously committed... There's a pattern to it, and Juju Lewis is falling into that pattern. Yeah, I also saw a USC fan that was like, the last I heard, Juju's dad is really upset about all this talk about him flipping. I'm like, then why is he on the field talking to Coach Prime at Right, practice? yes. <laughs> like, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, someone said we can't afford Juju. Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, obviously... Donate to 5430 mm-hmm. uh, to help the cause when it comes to that sort of thing. But this is not a um, let's check the bank account balance before we make this move. Mm-hmm. This is a, just like when you get Coach Prime, we'll figure out the money later if right. we can get Juju Lewis. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that they're in the mix and they've got a great chance. I mean, you mentioned it. Juju posted a picture on Twitter on Saturday. Thanks for always caring about what's best for me at T. Carlton Lewis, which is, I'm assuming is his dad, mm-hmm. and Coach Prime. I mean, he he's there multiple times. There's potential for him to come back on an OV. Um, you know, we talked about Bryce Underwood a lot, and he came back a few times, and I think there was a legitimate chance there. But kind of to, again, your point on flipping, like he's pretty much locked in. He's not going on visits anymore, like, he committed yeah. to LSU, and now they're building a class around him. Yes. Um, USC has been very hot on the recruiting trail lately, mm-hmm. but he's on flip watch. He is officially on flip watch. All right. Also, this is just a general statement. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in the chat trolling and trying to flex your money, no one believes you. There's no way like someone... Uh, who is a millionaire spends their time trolling in YouTube chats. Just <laughs> yes. Doesn't happen. Just doesn't happen. Good point. <laughs> oh man, what a time. Shout out to our good friends over at Illegal Pete's. Uh, them along with Circa were presenting our bracket insanity pods, which I think were a great success. They hooked us up with some food too. Yes. That food was clutch. Yeah. It was. So good. Um, and the bracket insanity was uh, was lovely. Massive success. Uh, maybe not today, but we are right on the verge of patio season out here in Colorado. Stop by one of their many locations, grab a margarita, a burrito. Um, everything hits at Illegal Pete's. It's your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. We will see you very soon. I feel like it, it's become more common recently where people confuse which one of us is Arcade and which one is Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, become a DNVI or die hard. Um, you can support Jake and myself um, by becoming a DNVR die hard. It's the number one way. You guys always do an incredible job of supporting us. Um, but this is the most direct and um, obvious support you can give us by coming a, becoming a die hard. You can read our die hard content. You can join the Discord, which a lot of people are. Um, there's a lot of group chats out there, a lot of buffs mm-hmm. group chats out there. But I think that. Uh, the Discord, just the way that it's formatted, is one of the best ones. We have a great, great uh, Discord channel with great buffs discussion in there, so you can you can join that. You get a free shirt when you become a member. You get a free shirt when you renew every year. It's a great, great deal, and we just dropped some new buff shirts, so make sure you head over to DNVR Locker to check those out as well. And as I speak, the Discord is popping off right now. So Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, a lot of basketball talk, which okay. we're about to get into right now. 
obviously, well, first off, congrats to CU women's basketball advancing to the Sweet 16. Let's go, baby. I think Iowa plays tonight yep. to determine their fate. If Choke watch. <laughs> I want them to win. I want this no, rematch, bro. No, no, no. Don't do that to me. No? You want the best path, the easiest path. I want the revenge. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Especially because if you play them, you play them in the Sweet 16. And then you have to turn around two days later and play an Elite Eight game. You don't think it's going to be like an emotional toll to take down the number one seed and the most hyped player in the country? It's part of the journey. Survive in advance. Whoever's in front of you, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm. You and I disagree on this one. Give me the easiest path. <laughs> if we could play a 16 seed, a 15 seed, a 14 seed, a 13 seed, or a 12 seed and win the championship, count me in. Fair enough. I'm about hanging banners. Uh, but congrats to CU Women's Basketball. They will play on Saturday in the Sweet 16. Against West Virginia. <laughs> we'll find out today. <laughs> uh, but the men... A hell of a run, man. Backs against the wall going back to February. Won eight straight, made their way to the Pac-12 title game. Close loss to Oregon. Uh, two teams who were very, very injured this last year in that championship game. They, of course, end up losing. They sneak into the first four, beat Boise State. Um, and then they beat Florida in an instant classic, really. Yep. And then, man, they fought their hearts out, just came up a little short against Marquette, really just didn't hit enough open looks. Yeah, that one hurt. That one hurt. I think they did a lot wrong. And it shows the kind of resilience they had as a team to be where they were in a position to win that game. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. A couple more open looks fall. That's it. They win. Um, KJ has two late that rattle in and out. Mm -hmm. Cody Williams, who obviously wasn't a great uh, three-point shooter this season, had a wide-open look. Missed um, some free throws, too. Also missed a, a free throw there. Um, it just hurt because they had become so fun mm -hmm. um, that I really thought that maybe, just maybe, this was a team of destiny. Uh, an Elite Eight matchup with, with uh, or sorry, a Sweet 16 matchup. With NC State, mm -hmm. who you were ranked higher than in the, in the brackets, like it kind of felt like things were lining up for them. But that has that doesn't discount the incredible run that they went on, and they, you know, just bought into Tad Boyle's philosophies, um, and it counted when it mattered most. But it is sad, and I, it's early to go here, but I think it's the, the rightful next place to go. The future is dark. <laughs> Dark and uncertain. Yes. Um, Luke O'Brien put out a post today that CU men's basketball on Twitter also put out. Um, said, forever a Buffalo. These last four years have been extremely special to me. Being a kid, March Madness was the reason I fell in love with this sport, and I wanted nothing more than to play college basketball because of it. I had, a, I had a lot of highs and lows here, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I still got more basketball in me, but I wanted to say it was an absolute blessing to represent my state and put on that Colorado jersey for four years. I will cherish all the memories I made, and I will forever be grateful to be a buff. So I'm assuming that's a transfer portal entry? <sighs> yeah, grad transfer. Yep. This is such a sad time. Luke O'Brien's like the ultimate Coloradan. Yeah. Tristan De Silva talked about how he like taught him Colorado sports yep. and everything. Like Luke like shows up in Avs jerseys and Nuggets jerseys. Mm -hmm. Like, But this is the way that uh, the current – outlook of college sports is Luke O'Brien will probably get an offer to go somewhere and be a contributor where, you know, and get paid money for it. Mm -hmm. And it's not that Colorado has no money. They don't have a lot. Uh, and it's the one thing that I've been pointing to of like, Hey, look, if you're, uh, if you're wanting this team to go to the next level, the, the same way that the, the football program needed it, they need NIL support, mm -hmm. uh, and really they need someone to step up and run a foundation in the way that 5430 is being <coughs> run, and you know they're now going to be a year and a half into this thing. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and it, they're just kind of like hitting their stride as a true yep. NIL foundation. So we got to get this thing rolling if someone wants to do it. But my biggest fear here is Luke – being 
There was a small hope that everyone could come back, right? The minuscule, yes, yes. Yes, but there's always that hope of like, oh, maybe they all get together and they have a big dinner and they're mm -hmm. like, why don't we just give this one more shot, guys? And KJ comes back and Luke comes back and Cody comes back and Tristan comes back and you can, you know, run it back. Um, it's not going to happen, I don't think. And with Luke kind of being the one who you would say would probably be most likely to come back, mm -hmm. doesn't seem like that's uh, the case. So it's going to be an uncertain future, and it doesn't help that Colorado is now entering into arguably the best basketball conference in the country, Yep. Um, especially now that you're adding Arizona to the mix as well. So need support. Tad Boyle needs support. Uh, and there's going to be a, maybe a little bit of a rebuild that has to happen here. Um, and he has a great class coming in next year. Obviously, some really good young guys mm -hmm. on this team. I love what Bangot Dak showed late in the season. I think he's going to be an all-timer uh, if he stays and develops under uh, Tad Boyle. But it's, uh, it's back to maybe not square one, but square two. Yeah. Um, I mean, this was the year. This was the year where it's like everyone's coming of age. You add in the five-star and Cody. The four seniors on the roster, Luke O'Brien being one of them, but Javon Hadley, um, Tristan Da Silva, Eddie Lampkin, and who's the fourth? That is the four. They have decisions to make. Yep. It seems like Luke has made his. We'll see what Hadley, Lampkin, and Da Silva decide. It seems like Da Silva could go first round in the NBA draft. Yeah. Uh, Cody probably in the same conversation, especially being in that lottery range. Yep. And then KJ, who knows what he decides to at this point. He's yeah. only a junior, but he showed he was one of the top point guards, top overall players in America this last year. Yeah, I think KJ is going to get offered multiple millions by a Blue Blood mm -hmm. program. I wouldn't be surprised. So whether he wants to do that or you know start his professional journey, it's going to be hard to keep him in Boulder. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Um, I hope that KJ just like says, no, it's, this is unfinished business. I got to do something here, but that's easy to say when there's not game changing money around the corner. Mm -hmm. They do have three players who have signed their letter of intent, um, in this 2024 basketball class, Andrew Crawford, he's a local kid out of Thunder Ridge. He's a guard, uh, Felix, oh God. Cusaris Cus yeah. is another guard. He's from, uh, looks like, Ontario. Yep. And then Sebastian Ranchik uh, looks like a wing out of California. So you got some young talent coming in. They did also bring in a few other guys uh, last year. You know, Bangot Dak was a guy who even moved up a class and became a really solid role player. Yes. I really wish we saw more of him this year. Yes. We didn't see anything from Courtney Anderson. Um, you know, Julian Hammond got hurt down the stretch. So there are some guys that you can look at on the roster right now and go, okay, this is a piece for next year. But, yeah, they're going to have to attack the portal, and hopefully they have the funds, really, to get commitments this time instead of just visits. Yeah, and Old School says, I disagree. So use future is very bright. Uh, maybe dark was the wrong word. I think uncertain, you, the word you used was better. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like it's so hard. I mean, there's a chance that this team this year had Chance McMillan – and Dalton connect on it. Oh, my God. What are we talking about right now? I mean, they're probably still playing. Yeah. You know? Um, but it all comes down to support. <clears throat> Both of those guys were expected to come. They got better offers and bigger offers elsewhere, and that's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. um, if you can get an, a great transfer class in here, then that changes everything, as we know with football. Mm -hmm. But the scary part is that it's not – the financial support for the program um, has, has not – been there thus far um cam duncan in the comments says cu has offered several elite transfers the basketball portal is heating up uh, yep. guys from all over the you know these mid-majors kind of g5 programs who were stars on their teams are starting to enter the portal at this point um again kind of the same situation last year they got them in the building they just weren't able to get commits mm -hmm. uh whether that be nil funds or any other reason but there's a chance that we could see them reload really in one off season if they're able to land, you know, a few top 100 portal players. Yep. Um, back to this game though. I mean, credit to Marquette. They kind of just played out of their minds. They shot 62% in that game, 50% from three, or I'm sorry, 43% from three, 50% from the line, but everything they shot went in. Yeah. They dictated the whole game. 
Um, and that's why I thought it was so impressive that the Buffs did what they did to make mm-hmm. it, a, you know, take a lead in the second half after being down 11 at half. Um, Kolick was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. What was he from the field? He was 10 of 14. And what was he from three? Uh, he was 0 for 1. Uh, Jones was 4 for 10, though. So in the end, he goes 10 for 13 from inside range. And I don't think he missed a layup. Mm-hmm. Um, it was or not a layup. I mean, it, it's hard to even call it that. I mean, he's just contorting himself at the rim, yeah. getting that ball as far as he possibly can away from his body. I mean, he's like, he's going up against like Tristan. And Eddie. Yeah. Yes. And like getting the ball far enough away from him that those guys can't block it. Unbelievable finisher around the rim. Credit to him. Um, Credits Marquette. They played fantastic. Unfortunately, the Buffs, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's unfortunate, but they got, I thought they got Florida's best swing mm-hmm. and somehow theirs was better. Mm-hmm. They also then got Marquette's best swing and a couple shots dropped and they were able to get through. It would have been nice to just get an off night mm-hmm. uh, from one of these teams. I guess they got an off night from Boise, but it's uh it was a great fun, fun run. Uh, and as I said on Twitter, I'm grateful that they became so fun that it hurts this much that they're done. Yes. Because there was a time in there where they weren't that fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, they got it together, and, and we'll have fond memories of that squad. Yeah, just, again, to put a bow on it, it just sucks to see that this team is done playing because of what you just said, but they just looked like they really enjoyed playing with each other. Tad looked like he really enjoyed coaching this group. Mm-hmm. They were very, very tight, I think, on and off the court. And it was a special group in many, many ways. And they fought through adversity. They showed a ton of heart down the stretch. Um, sometimes it's just how it goes, man. Yep. I'm excited about the women, though. Um, and it feels like they got their swagger back, mm-hmm. which is huge. They lost it there for a little minute. Mm-hmm. Um, now playing like top five teams every game can really take a toll on you. They kind of got to ease back into it i think they got they obviously played oregon in the pac-12 tournament nice blowout win there another tough loss against oregon state it it's hard it's uh easy to forget that most of their losses this season came against oregon state they can avoid oregon state um they might be able to keep this rolling obviously a potential date with caitlin clark in the next round but henry yesterday when he got to the bar told me Hey, you can get women to win the championship at plus 20,000 right now. Wow. I got in on it after the game, all the way down to plus 10,000. Yep. They beat Iowa. That thing's probably going to plus 1,000 or mm-hmm. lower. So, uh, a fun little bet to be in on there. Um, but another team that just showed a lot of heart this year, a lot of just selfless players on this team. And Coach Payton's quote about Jalen Sherrod and how she basically took herself out of the game for Tamia Sadler. And to me, Played really well last uh, last night, too. Yeah. Um, to me, it's awesome, dude. Yeah. She's the best player on the team at getting her own shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're, I think they're going to kind of need her to cook. Yeah, they got decent performances. They got a double-double from Quay Miller again. Um, we haven't really seen... And they don't really have a superstar, but no one's really blown up. And they're like, you know, Frida hasn't hit eight threes in a yeah. game or something like that. You know, how many minutes did Frida play yesterday? Uh, she got nineteen. I felt like she was not playing very much. Yeah, uh, Weta got thirty-one off the bench. Okay, uh, Tamia had nineteen. Uh, Sherrod only had twenty-five. So, Marcus says, "Go Mar- Marquette." Hey, hats off, respect. Yep, I'll be uh, I'll be rooting for him. They were a great basketball Actually, team. I guess I won't. NC State's electric. They are. DJ Burns. Yes. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, but I respect that team a lot. They're really good. Rough weekend for the dogs, though, man. I don't want to talk about it. It's fair enough. But. 15 and 1 for favorites over the last two days. I've never seen anything like that. In the, in the NCAA tournament. Well, and then everyone's got the takes today on Twitter where it's like, you know what, this is great for the tournament, though, because the Cinderella's are fun, blah, 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 for the first weekend, but then the tournament sucks. No, everyone no, no, likes no. to watch we're the here Cinderella's. For the, we're here for the, um, Brady said I got destroyed this weekend betting all underdogs. Actually, not true. After all of that, down two units on the whole tournament, mm-hmm. I think. I think, yep. Um, Friday was a great day, though. Right? Second yeah, that's what day? I mean. Is like yeah. Friday was so good that it was canceled out then by Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, but Friday, 16 games, 
Saturday and Sunday, 16 games. So they kind of canceled each other out. Um, overall, it was brutal. But the whole point of the strategy is that the big upsets kind of carry you. Mm-hmm. Now we're just going to need those close games to go the way of like the plus 115, 130s uh, a few more times to get back on the right side of things. I mean, we were robbed with Stanford, and we would have been looking really, really good after that. We were robbed it in a lot of ways. That's true. Um, but again, Saturday, the women's team in the Sweet 16. That's all the way Saturday? I'm pretty sure. I can no, double check. that can't be that late. I mean, they're finishing up their first weekend today. So then wouldn't it start again? Oh, I guess, yeah, I guess Friday, Saturday would be the next round. So if they're the second wave, then that would make sense. I'm double checking. Um, I don't know why I can't find it. I'll, I'll Google. All right, chat, what's up? What do we got today? King P247. Yep, you right, Saturday. Against TBD. Go Mountaineers. Go Mountaineers. Although the revenge would be sweet. I think I said this on the live stream yesterday. I think that uh, America is close to turning on Caitlin <coughs> Clark. Oh, it was not a good look for her on uh, Saturday or whatever it was. She's having a she's having a, a little bit of a downfall here. Yeah, a fall from grace. I guess is the word I was looking for. She did take a haymaker across the face from Holy Cross. Though. She did. She ate that punch too. Yeah. I was impressed. So Colorado could play Iowa in the Sweet Sixteen and then LSU in the Elite Eight. Wow. That would be revenge for them. Mm-hmm. Um, what is Travis's 40 time? I bet you he runs a 4-4. Four, four. Easy. Could probably go faster, too, if he trained at it for a few weeks. Yeah, and he will, obviously, once mm-hmm. combine season comes around. Uh, Daryl Hopkins, think we can flip Juju? Yes. Yep. Yes. Sports convos with Chris. Ohio State spring game will be on Fox. Any news on whether the Buffs will be will get on Fox or the Pac-12 network? Michigan also announced the same. So I think it's just a matter of time. But I know the Pac-12 is tied in. Yeah, I, uh, I think that there's some politics going on. And once those are going to have to be taken care of before anything else happens. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it's on Fox, though. That'd be peak viewership, obviously. Yep. And make almost everyone happy. Uh, Jermaine says the watch along streams were fun this weekend with the buff emoji. Thanks, man. Thanks yeah. for everyone who tuned in. We had a lot of fun too. Mm-hmm. I like it is a lot of work uh, being on stream for that long, but I was gonna watch March Madness every second of it anyway. Might right. as well uh, watch with the people. Just getting introduced to Nikki Madness alone was worth it. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I'm like. I just want to play that whenever I'm watching a ra- like you know a random NBA playoff game or something. Yeah, Wednesday night NBA or something. Like, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jay asked, "What was the deal with the smash glass during the live stream when KJ Kawhi Simpson dropped that four bounce shot?" <laughs> Loved your reaction. Sorry about yesterday. Go and see double women's buffs. What was the deal? This is a. Uh... <laughs> The carnage once the KJ shot dropped against oh, yeah. Florida. Would oh, you yeah. care to explain? Well, I attempted to stand up on this foot rail that sits under the booth. Uh-huh. And for the second time ever, the foot rail <laughs> broke, which then caused me to like kind of like slide out a little bit. Not fully, but enough to then hit the table, which knocked the table into Adam, which then knocked the glass off the table. And all in the, in the end is just part of uh, a legendary moment. What's mm-hmm. a legendary moment without some broken glass and a broken foot rail? The other time this foot rail broke was when the Nuggets won the, uh, the NBA championship. So we're in on broken foot rails. <laughs> um, that was a hell of a clip, though. It was. That's I've, worth it. Like, that's what it's all about. I've watched it like 30 times. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Appreciate your cold weather music. Uh, Eric, how do you think CU basketball will do in the Big 12? I think they might do pretty well. Um, the Big 12 is going to be a gauntlet, 
Um, but I think they showed some vulnerabilities during the tournament too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tyler, our kind of resident college basketball uh, super fan, super fan, has been pounding the table that the middle of the pack, uh, the middle of the pack of the Big Twelve, uh, was kind of weak, and you saw that in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say this. Your chances of making the tournament when playing in the Big 12 are pretty good when you have a good team. There's been a couple times that CU has missed the tournament because they didn't have a strong enough resume. Um, and that won't happen mm-hmm. in the Big 12. You can pretty much go like 500 in conference, have a nice non-conference schedule, and make the, uh, make the tournament in the Big 12. So you're going to have opportunities for big wins damn near a couple times a month at home. Um so I'd rather have it that way, but it is going to be tough and it doesn't help that you're kind of starting over mm-hmm. a little bit with the roster right now. I mean, we'll see. Again, some decisions need to be made by uh, the older players on this team. I think if you just get one of those guys, it's like a foundational piece to build around yep. almost. Uh, old school with the super chat. We hit that one. Oh, we hit that one. Thanks for the super chat. Sean says AJ or Juju. Um, I mean, both have their... It's two very different skill sets. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it really just comes down to which flavor do you want. Do you want to be more smash mouth and have a big quarterback like AJ who can be a true threat running the ball? Or do you want a point guard at quarterback who can extend plays and is always a threat for the big play down the field in Juju? I like Juju a little better. I'd probably side on Juju, too, and it seems like the AJ stuff is kind of passed at this point also. Yeah, we'll see. Next. Uh, old Dirty Lou. Do you think they will compare 2025 QB draft class like 2022 QB draft class? <clears throat> seems like they aren't getting the same love of the guys going this year. I think this always happens this time of year. Next year's class isn't going to be as good. Yep. 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 All it's going to take is... Obviously, Shador is going to go for like 40 touchdowns and three interceptions. He's going to have all the hype. Um, Carson Beck is going to have a good season at Mm -hmm. Georgia. Like, that's just bound to happen. He's going to get built up. Quinn Ewers, another one. Like, by the end of it, quarterbacks sell. And so they're all going to get uh, their moment in the sun that people are going to build them up. Obviously, there are there is a difference in classes. This one is really, really heavy mm-hmm. on top end talent. But by the time we get to uh, next year, we'll be talking about a lot of different quarterbacks. There's there's going to be some other guys that pop up too. Right. No, I, we're I already think we're looking much better than the 2022 class. Who was the number one QB in the 2022? That was uh, so the top five were Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter, Malik oh, Willis, yeah, Matt that was, Corral. That was rough. Bailey Zappi, um, Sam Howell also went. Skylar Thompson went, so and of course Brock Purdy. So other than Brock Purdy, zero starters left from that. Yeah, I mean wow. Sam Howell and Kenny Pickett have already been demoted to backups. Desmond Ritter's a backup too because yeah. Kirk Cousins is there. Matt Corral is already out of the league. And Malik Willis is probably switching positions or on his way out of the league very soon. Sheesh. What a bloodbath. Yeah. But, I mean, like, we already have, like, three guys to watch out for in this class. And Shador, Beck, and Ewers. Like, that's already much more than, I mean, there was a six-year quarterback in Kenny Pickett who was the top quarterback that year. Totally. Cornell asked, do you guys think that quarterback Walter Taylor can be QB1 next year? Maybe. Maybe. I'd like to see him get on the field just in like a, you know, Rick Ross package type of role just to see what he has. Mm-hmm. But also we're going to get a decent look at him in the spring game. Yeah. So uh, he certainly has a lot of physical gifts. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting. When will the bus be officially part of the Big 12? When is the Pac-12 contract up? Uh, I believe it's just at the end of the spring sports season. Mm-hmm. So whatever the last one is for... I actually don't even know what the last one we compete in is. I don't. They have summer stuff, right? Not baseball, but I don't know. But but obviously, by the time uh, next school year yes. comes around, they're fully in the Big Twelve. Yep. 
And then uh, TK Deasley says, is Cody a top three pick? After what you saw this year, be 100% honest because I don't think so. Athleticism isn't enough to drop to draft top three. Um, it's going to be an interesting conversation. It's more of a conversation just on, honestly about the, the draft this year. It's a really, really weak draft. So just looking at this generic big board here, this was updated eight days ago. The top three guys are European. <clears throat> I love that there's another Nikola... You have Nikola Topic. Jokic, Nikola Jovic, oh. and now Nikola Topic uh, coming in, to, all from Serbia. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, there was a tie, like, Cody out of time was considered the best um, American prospect. Right now, he's considered the third best on this. T to answer your question, is he top three? I don't think so. I mean, there's a lot of G League guys in here, too. Um, of course, there's the Kentucky guys, but it's... And we've talked to Harrison about this, and we talked about it on the uh, bracket insanity thing. That's just not a good draft. It's not, and I think honestly, what you're going to see is teams just taking big swings, probably on uh, European or international mm -hmm. players at the top of the draft. But on Cody, I think it's he was hurt a lot this year, and you know maybe he was held out more because of the potential he shows and his NFL or NBA draft potential. That's been discussed, but when he was like at the top of his game, you know, you think like January uh, before this most recent injury, before even the the facial fracture, like the dude was verging on dominant. Yeah, I mean, he was posterizing guys, he was making blocks, yeah, he was knocking true. down shots, um, he was bringing the ball up the court a lot too, even with KJ on the court. Yeah, he was doing a lot. It's just he's not great at anything. Right. And that makes him it makes it hard to draft him that high. Mm -hmm. But very long, obviously yep. very young, has NBA pedigree. Yeah. Do you think he's top three to nope. answer the question though? I don't think so either. I think he'll be honestly back half of the lottery. He's gonna be a lottery pick for sure. Um I think that's it. Plus, Alyssa's got to get out of here. Yep, we got to get out of here. Chat, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll have Neely back sometime this week, too. Um, it's going to be a little rough one. We're, the team's on break. We'll be back in Boulder next week, but we'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's go Buffs. Let's go Buffs. We all silly like the mayor.